Hey guys, Erwin Yusuf here from Lenders, and we're here to talk about the wonderful, confusing world of dairy. If you haven't yet, we already made a video talking about the different types of milk that you can find. So before watching this, please make sure to check back on the feed and watch that first. It's truly and really important. Once you've covered the basics of milk, you can go ahead and delve into the more varied industry of other dairy products. So let's start really simply with something that everyone loves, which is yogurt. Yogurt is basically fermented milk with the help of some live and healthy bacteria to turn it into this delicious, thick product that you're used to. The different types of yogurt will vary depending on the different types of milk. So if you have low-fat yogurt, it's using low-fat milk. If you have non-fat yogurt, that usually means it's using skim milk. And finally, full cream means full cream. The one everyone thinks is the healthiest is usually the healthiest, which is Greek yogurt. Greek yogurt is widely considered one of the healthiest, and I'm gonna tell you why. It's simply because the yogurt is strained, so then you have a nice, thicker consistency. If you've eaten Greek yogurt, you know exactly what I'm talking about. And that just means that it has much more protein than regular yogurt, and is usually less sweet, so it's much healthier for the body. Most yogurts you'll find on other shelves usually have other added ingredients in it. So it's very important to always pick one up and read the nutritional label to see exactly what it is that you truly want. If you want a yogurt that's flavored, then most of the time that's using some jams or some fresh fruit when you're lucky. But the purest form of yogurt that you can find only has that initial milk, that bacteria that was added, sometimes some added protein in there, or some coagulants to make everything a little thicker. Some yogurts will be more liquid and actually drinkable instead of just spoonable, if that's a word. And they usually just mix in some juices or some water in there to make it slightly lighter and usually sweeter. Sour cream, hence the name, is actually fermented with lactic acid bacteria. It is not fully fermented, which is why it is not categorized as a yogurt. The closest thing in terms of flavor of sour cream in terms of yogurt is a non-fat yogurt. The number one question I like to ask people when we're talking about dairy products is what is the difference between milk and cream? I'll give you a second. Most people you ask actually don't know what the main difference is. It's simple. Cream starts as milk. Simple as that. Milk is then pasteurized to make a drink or the water content in the milk can then be reduced and then eventually made into cream, which is why you have various levels of cream. So the more you reduce water from the milk, the heavier the cream that you get, which is why you have different variants and levels of cream. Finally, if you strip it from most of its water, what do you get? You get butter. So butter is just churned milk that because of the bacteria that's in there has separated the butter from the buttermilk. And so that's why you have buttermilk as well. Butter is one of my favorite ingredients to use in the kitchen, and the best thing to get is something that is just in its purest form. Right here, I've got the Emborg butter. I'm gonna read out the ingredients just to show you what I mean. It has cream, which is a milk product, lactic culture, and salt. Three very simple ingredients, and that is all that it takes to make this. The best products I like are the ones with the least amount of ingredients used to make it. So even with butter, you have different degrees of it. You have some really fresh butter, which is made straight from a farm, made and churned fresh, and then brought to the store nearby, which needs to be consumed extremely fast because it hasn't been boiled as much, it hasn't been homogenized as much, it hasn't been kind of stripped as much as possible from its natural state. So that's something that needs to be consumed right away. Then you have those with added salt that actually helps you have a longer shelf life. It also increases the flavor, in my opinion. Finally, it is unsalted butter for those who want to control the salt levels in their food, and most especially very popular in baking because you usually either add salt and you don't want your butter to be too salty. Next, the other big category in butters are margarines. I've personally never been a fan simply because I miss the buttery flavor, um, but you have some margarines that are made that are actually quite good. They used to be not great for you because people used to leave trans fats in there. Now margarine can actually be made with some healthy oils and some healthy ingredients, and they've removed most of the trans fats completely, which is really good for your health. So we've come to a point where butter and margarine kind of have similar profiles, similar nutritional values, but at the end of the day, butter does remain more natural. So to really keep it simple, the main difference is butter is made with usually three ingredients, maybe a bit more sometimes, whereas margarine, to make that consistency feel like butter and any times you need to make an ingredient feel like another ingredient, you have to add lots of different ingredients in there to get that texture and that taste correct. 
I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I know it gets confusing, but the most important thing is just to eat what you enjoy and to know what you're eating. That is my motto in life. All right, guys, I'll see you soon.